Hello everybody, welcome to our new guide. Today we're talking about power weapons. If you have a kill team or a war cry team, you want to have magic weapons on, this is your guide. Uh, the aim of it is to get it done quickly for tabletop or gaming purposes. Of course, this is not a, like a competition quality level of power weapons, but I think I, I like it. So maybe you will as well. Let me know what you think about it. Also, if you want to see me paint higher quality paint jobs, because this weapon here, or this model, or our next project in line, which is this guy here. Come on Twitch, because we do monthly giveaways and I stream there 8 hours a day for 5 days a week. So that's where you can find me and ask me questions and just chill with me while we paint together. So I'll see you there guys, and thank you again so much for watching. Enjoy the guide. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I already base coated the, the weapon with a Cantor Blue from GW. You can see all the colors in the palette. We have Cantor Blue, Teclis Blue, uh, Abaddon Black, and Ivory from Vallejo. These are the colors I'm going to be using for this. So after the base coat, which is pretty simple to do, I don't think you guys need to see me do it. The first thing I'm going to do is mix a little bit of Teclis into my Cantor to get a first highlight. So. The thing with power weapon is that they are pretty much no metallic metal. So the way you achieve the, the illusion of a power weapon is thanks to very high contrast between the layers and between the highlights and the shadows. So the way you achieve it, rather than doing it in the single specific highlight, you do it with the general highlighting of the object you're painting. In this case, <clears throat> what I mean is that where you have an highlight, you are going to have a shadow opposing it. So we have highlight, shadow, highlight. So we're going to have shadow, highlight, shadow. That's how it works. So the first highlight you choose, it really depends on how it's going to be assembled on the model, what you think is going to be cooler if it's highlighted. It's very personal and it depends on the composition of the model, but I'm not going to go into that. Let's just say that in this specific case, I chose the highlight to be the tip of the blade. So, again, I'm gonna just base coat this color here over a couple of layers. I keep them fairly thin, they're not like through base coats, they're more like an in between of a base coat and a layer. But again, the definition of layer and base coat, like sometimes kind of blurs together in, a, in, in the same thing. That said, we have done what we were supposed to. We have base coated. You, you can barely see, but it's there. We have a little bit of highlighting going on. So the best thing to do next is to reinforce this as many times as we, as we want. Keep in, in mind that we're gonna have to blend this. So like GW teaches, if you can make sure that the next layer of this you apply is in a smaller surface so that you get a transition between the base coat and the first highlight you placed. I don't really care about it though, like when I paint for myself or commissions or stuff like that, I don't really care about getting this kind of technique applied because I will glaze after that. But so this is the first step. Next step is blending. So I can go back and pick up some more counter blue, diluting it. Not too much though, I don't want this to be like super watery. I just care about it not being <clears throat> overrunning my brush. So now I can go back and from the layer I just placed, wipe the brush ac across towards the base coat of Cantor Blue. Doing this a few times will let me get a nice smooth transition between the two color and all be will be well. So we're doing this a couple of times. It's very hot where I am right now, so like the paint is drying the second I put it on the brush. Like depending on where you live, the drying times may vary. Also, it may you might be using uh, some sort of additives to to slow down the drying time and all the things. But the rule is to always, always let this dry before you touch it again. Otherwise, you're gonna end up taking the paint off of the model and then you're gonna have to redo pretty much the base coating in that specific spot. It gets very annoying to fix. So it's better to be patient 
then uh, rushing things and then uh, finding yourself in a pickle. So, a couple more, a couple more glazes. Again, this is kind of not really tabletop standard, but it's not definitely it's not display standard. So we don't care too much about the, the blendings being perfect. We just want them to be kind of there. Like if you if you have seen that in Latham video about it, about power weapons, he also doesn't really blend well his things. Like there is a there is a limit to how mani maniacal you can be with blending and glazing. And I think that one of the most important aspects of being a miniature painter that is happy with what he's doing is actually understanding what you are aiming to achieve. Because if you want like a super high quality paint job, be ready to spend many many hours on it. So. The way I'm structuring these videos, at least for now, is to think as if I was a person painting a kill team or a bunch of models, not like just one. So I have to cut some corners, right? I will be not blending my, my life away on 20 blades, right? You want to do it on a single model, you want to enter in a, in a fancy competition or a, in a fancy commission or in a model you love, but when you have a bunch of them, you really don't want to spend that much time on them. Which is kind of why contrast paints are so... were so hyped when they came out. For that reason, you can get stuff on the table quickly. So that's the point of this guide, getting stuff on the table quickly, but rather than being just quickly, also needs to look kind of good. So, as you can tell I'm going to be using my thumb a lot to clean off excess paint, because it's just faster than just cleaning it out. Uh, cleaning it on uh, the, the paper towel for me. So right now, this is pure techless blue. Same thing. Applying a layer, this time in a smaller surface than the one I covered earlier with the other base coat, with, with the other highlight. I don't want to kill the highlighting I've done, because otherwise I will also have killed all the glazing I've done to blend it. So that kind of sucks. So we're trying to keep everything clean and have like a nice nice transition between these paints. You can tell it's already getting to look like a power weapon. Doesn't take too much work to get there. So as I keep saying and I in on my streams and also in this video probably is that if you want to get to a nice non-metallic understanding blades and power weapons in general are like the best starting point because they teach you blending and they teach you they teach you highlighting in a checkerboard kind of way, for a, for a lack of a better word. Because you're always having a highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. That's how, that's how it works. No metallic is always like this. Like the, the 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 place and the object you're painting on changes constantly, but you're always aiming for this effect at the end, having an highlight next to a deep shadow. The stronger the highlight, the stronger the shadow next to it. Same goes for power blades. So, I don't consider them two different things. Like, I could have called this guide a non metallic weapon and used the grays, and it would be exactly the same guide. But, uh. Power weapons are cooler. So, <clears throat> we have this, this layer on. It's already kind of blended well, so I don't feel like having to do it. Having to do more blending on it. So, what I'm gonna do is add a bit of ivory to this. Checklist blue. Maybe a bit more. Let's, let's exaggerate the highlighting. Not too much though. Yeah, I like this. And now we're gonna highlight yet again. Always going for smaller and smaller surface coverage. Which means that, by the way, painting in this kind of way feels harder, but actually it's faster because you're always like. Besides the base coat and the first highlight, you're not covering much surface, are you? Like, you're always going smaller, so... The last highlights are very quickly done. Again, I'm trying to be as fast as I can here, so sometimes I will be painting stuff that I shouldn't be painting. Like, right now, I should be waiting for this to dry. But I'm not, because I'm... I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to end up with, like, a 40 minute video. I want this to be quick. So, again, for the purpose of the quality we are achieving. I'm imagining having to do many of these, not just one. So 
if I was actually doing many of these, I would be setting up at least two or three of them, so I can paint them all at the same time. So rather than waiting for it to dry, I would just be changing model and doing this highlight on another model, and then the next, and then the first one would be dry by the time I'm done, so I can keep going without ever having to stop. It's kind of the same mentality you use when you paint with uh, washes. Like when you're using a wash, you do want to have as many models as possible there, so that you don't just sit there looking at it drying. So this highlight is very strong and I like it, but we need to blend it. So we're going to be taking some protected sprue. We're going to add it to this layer we just completed. Maybe more thick. Again, this is like perception. It has nothing to do with... Like you hear people talk about like specific recipes where you're like, oh, 70% Tecla serve, 25% blue, 11% something. I don't paint like this and I, I don't think you should either. Mostly because this is not a science. Like, I don't know if I can, if I can call it an art, but it's definitely not a science. Like the science aspect of it has been done by people when they made the paints. Unless you are a colorist, which is the kind of person that, you know, studies pigments and paints and stuff like that, which you can be, you shouldn't be really worrying about the science of it all. It's just about, you know, the, how things work. Yes, there are scientific things, and this is why things are reacting this way, such as the reason why you see this color blending into the other, it's because your eye is perceiving light, the, the, the wavelength of the colors reflected on it with a filter on top, which is the glaze I'm placing now. So the better the filter, the more you can't see the difference. And so everything blends. So it's about tricking the eye, yes, and it's about tricking it following scientific rules, but it's, it doesn't have to be math. It can just be like simple instincts. Like, does this look good? Yes, no. If it doesn't, you just keep going, doing it. If it does, you stop. So the same way you don't mix paints in a way that you have like a, a specific, I mean, if you do need it for your own peace of mind, you can do it. But if you see people do it and you're like, oh, damn it, I don't do it. I must suck. You don't. It's just find a mix that you think it's an in-between of the things you're mixing together. So like if you have white and black, definitely gray is the in-between. And then you can have an in-between of the in-between. So like black, gray, white, and then you can have gray and white together and have another one, and then a black and gray together and have another one, and you can keep adding to that. <clears throat> but there isn't really a specific amount you should mix or a, a specific recipe to follow. Just, just follow your eyes, they'll do their job. So that said, I'm keeping the blending up. I want to darken this a little bit, getting the blend to look nice because I feel like there's a bit too much difference between the blue base coat and these highlights I have, I have here so I am covering this a little bit to darken this not too much though and the more you do this the cleaner it gets like you will notice the blending and it will look a little bit dirty. If you keep doing it, it will look smooth, but if you do it too much or wrong, it's going to cover everything, you're going to lose it, so you're going to have to redo it. Glazing, unfortunately, does take a little bit to get used to, but it absolutely is my favorite technique to know. Web blending is fantastic as well. There are All techniques have, are very useful. It's just a matter of preference, like how you like to see your model come to life. Pretty much. Web blending needs a bit more, I feel like it needs a bit more uh, reactive mentality. Like you're looking at the paint dry as well as another paint dry and they're drying together and you're trying to mix them as they're drying. So you kind of have like to be on your foot, think on your feet and just immediately react with your brush while glazing is a bit more time consuming, but it's cleaner. At least for me, it's cleaner. It's a good way to get stuff done. It's also fast once you get to know how to glaze, you can, uh, you can very, very easily uh, get the perfect consistency, like almost 100% of the time and not have to worry about making sure the glaze is right. 
like right now you can see I'm just picking up the paint as I as I'm talking. I'm not really thinking much, right? Just getting stuff done. And this is difficult to explain. Like I can do a video about glazing if you want, and if you if you do, let me know in the comments or come on Twitch and tell me. But for now, this is all about painting a power sword. And again, if you don't, if you aren't comfortable with glazing, just use layering. Just Use layers of paint, progressively darker or brighter, depending on what you're painting. Always making sure that the next layer covers less space than the one pri prior to it, and you'll be fine. So we have this done. So now, one thing we can do is edge highlight it. Uh, I'm not sure if the weapon will be done, but edge highlighting is what gives me the, the idea. So if I see that the edge highlights are a bit too bright compared to the last highlight I've placed, I know that I need to make it brighter. So I'm using uh, Baleo model color ivory here make this edges pop and again the most important thing for no metallic or power weapons or major painting in general like edge lights are very important they help define the volumes and uh, make the eyes understand things and the color of an edge light actually really helps in an, in also understanding what kind of object you're looking at what's the material it's made of so like in the case of non-metallic and power weapons you want very bright edge lights <laughs> because those give the impression of metal if i was painting something that wasn't metal my edge light would be slightly darker than this because i don't want it to look metallic so i don't want to have a like, white reflection of this of the sun on it i want something more dull so this edge here the one i'm painting now is Really not fun to paint, I'll be honest with you, but uh, gotta do what I gotta do, right? This one usually takes me a little bit of time to get, and also <clears throat> needs a little bit of cleanup after. I am not the best painter in the galaxy, I never claimed I am. So sometimes there are things that take a while for me as well. I consider myself very fast though speed comes at a cost such as this again don't worry about it like if it happens to you as well it makes perfect sense it's it's a very difficult line because you're trying to keep the brush steady over like a, a surface that is kind of angled so the brush doesn't really want to follow the angle and if you use the side of it it gets super risky because the side isn't really this edge isn't really sculpted well enough for you to use the side but you can use it at the end to reinforce it if you want to and again, this is looking not bad but of course we want to at least i do i want to fix these uh these edges i've done here so i'm gonna be going back to all the layers i've used so it doesn't need to be like this the exact mixture it can be something else long as it kind of follows the colors beneath it fine and um, yes here comes this very white okay, since I've done all the work in blending earlier if I just am careful and I just only cover the edge of light I missed <coughs> it, it's not giving a show don't be afraid of ruining your work or something like that. Don't, don't, don't be. It's perfectly fine. So we can reinforce this highlight a little bit if we want, just to make it pop a little bit more. Again, it really depends how much you want to work on this. Also, like, you can either go very sharp, stark highlighting, and then not worry too much about the blending, or you can take it slow and add progressively more colors to the mix. Like right now, I could do this layer here and then add more white to it and do another one, do more white to it and do another one. It will be cleaner, of course, but it will also take a lot of time. While instead, if I do this, just keep it fairly bright. Fine. So, one last thing we can do is uh, use pure black as a glaze again and just make this shadow here this shadow here a bit stronger so I'm not gonna cover completely the blue 
I'm just gonna do a little layer of black on top of this. Make it darker. And I don't mind how this weapon is looking, considering that it needs to be like a weapon for 12, 10, 12 models. But again, if you wanna go to the next level and paint better than this, you can. You can definitely expand on top of this. You can add light glints, you can add uh, ambiental reflection off of it. You can add so many different things. But pretty much all the paint jobs, they all start from a very simple thing and then they become <clears throat> harder and more interesting to do as they go. But you're always starting from a base because you're always starting from a little highlight and then everything evolves from there based on what you like. So let's say I want to do this a little bit brighter because I feel like the highlighting is kind of meh. So we can just do this and boop, pop the other down. And again, also the, the way you highlight can be different. Like, don't get this as the only way of painting the metallic blades or power weapons because it's not. Like, you can also change the angle of the highlight, you can add uh, texturing to the, to the blade to make it look a bit more used. Doesn't need to be perfectly blended all the time. Blending like like many, many, many way better painters than I am say blending isn't exactly the, the, the end step. Because if, if it was, you'd be using the airbrush 99% of your time, but... There are other things that you can paint only with a brush, such as textures and stuff like that, that those are the real thing that make your paint job look like astonishing. But blending is cool, and I like it a lot. But again, I don't believe it's the only way to paint. This is just one, one of the many ways. And yeah, here we, we're done. I mean, we could add purple shadows to this if we wanted to. We could add orange shadows. We could do so many things to this to make it look more interesting without actually putting too much work in it. But again, the object, the objective of this videos is to show you quick easy ways of getting stuff done to a decent level like for example one thing i would do maybe i can do it with you here let's just do it i need i want to do a bit more of a transition layer on this highlight here because i feel like it's not working as much as i want it to we can do this Better. We blend this. Also, one nice, nice way of painting is wet blending, as I was saying just now. And learn wet blending. Do it. There are a bunch of painters that are really good at painting and can get like impressive results, or at least impressive first results. Blending, web blending. Just a matter of what you like, what you feel is fast. For me, web blending is really good, but uh, I don't have the same success I have with glazing, so I'd rather stick to glazing. But other people are way more successful than I am, and they can get stuff done. So Okay, I think we're good. I like this blade. I think it's a, it's a very nice blade. Imagine it on a, on a space mine. Oh, it looks cool, right? Maybe on a, on a blood angel to have like some contrast with the blues and reds and all that stuff. It's really cool stuff, right? Well, if you have any other question, please hit the comments. Also subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, most importantly, if you want something done by me, like a video, let me know and I'll try to do it. I don't know everything about painting, of course, I'm still very new to this, but uh, 
there are things I know. So maybe if you want to know, I don't know, skin tones or something else, let me know and I'll try to make a video about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye. Okay, so. Okay, so let's go with.